Good day, everybody. On this good Nuwabic day, uh, Shahur Nut. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. That might not be right. Hold on. Let me let me double check. Rahubat, everybody, in the Nuwabian world. This is a Murhuta Nudimud Kahagah Duel. Um, and it is Shahur Nut Ninti Yawum uh, Wah Uzbu. So the month Nut, uh, the day is Ninti, and it's the first week. And Nut is the seventh month uh, of our calendar. If you don't know the calendar, you could always go to goldemoreservices.com. And check that out. Uh, we got a couple things we sell out there um, for anybody who want to represent the Wapian culture. Uh, the new language book will be out next year. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, modifications and updates to that. Um, so you know, people who uh, who hold dearly to the you know the holy tablets and the HTM teachings and uh, Ansar Rala teachings, uh, Hebraic teachings and uh, Christian Jesusism or Christism teachings um, will be able to go to that website. There's also attire, you know, like uh, we got aprons on there made out of silk, black and color, tunicas to represent uh, the nation. Um, what else we got? We got hats, baseball caps, flat bill baseball caps with a national symbol on it. Um, what else do we got? Family, family is Hau. What else we got? Hau. Um, I think that's about it. We got the introductory book to the ancient mystical order of Melchizedek too. So, um, you know, anybody asking us to stop doing these things, um, might as well go to the Psycho Ward because uh, that will never happen. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was, and it's going to get a little confrontational going to get a little confrontational because uh, we're going to start talking about Africans and people indigenous to the Americas and a little bit about my ancestry tree that I did through, uh, through 23 and Me, and followed up the genetic data with a brother called Tyrone Cannon, a good moor that's a geneticist, and uh, he dispelled the out of Africa theory. Uh, which, thanks to the brother, brother Dane Calloway, we know as Frank Boaz and Melvin Herskovitz. So anybody pushing that, if you have woolly hair, dark skin, broad nose, high cheekbone, and uh, that you're from Africa, you're pushing a white man's theory, including Dr. York. I hate to call out the master teacher on that, but yes, the, even the master teacher is pushing a white man's theory. Um, because before the 1900s, you didn't hear nothing about no out of Africa theory. Um, you heard about African slaves wanting to go back to Africa, and that's why they created um, Liberia, supposedly. But our ancestors from this uh, land never claimed they were from Africa, unless they were brainwashed by the white man's theory that the black man is pushing, the more some of these moors are pushing as far as, um, um, you know what I'm saying, as far as, um, you know, the out of Africa thing. Everybody's from Africa. Every dark-skinned person in the world's from Africa. False. So we're actually going to go in, and I'm hoping my screen is sharing. Um, I think... I believe it is so um, or else I'm going to have to talk about this twice and that's that's not good uh, okay 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 I'm testing things out here in this software so so um, let me uh, let me test something real quick I got, I got to see if I'm actually sharing my screen Okay, it looks like I am. Okay, you can run a test real quick to see if you're actually uh, sharing the screen. So, let me tell you, this 
this, um, what I'm showing you on my screen, is a genetic brother, Tyrone Lewis Cannon, who I paid to have services uh, with after I got my 23andMe um, genetic uh, sequence back, right? So I got my 23andMe genetic sequence back, but the 23andMe genetic sequence will tell you that you're from Africa, <laughs> right? So they're playing into the same uh, brainwashed uh, frame of mind thinking that all these black consciousness people, they claim that they're so conscious. But when they ask their grandmama and their granddaddy where they from and their grandfather, their granddaddy say, we from here and we're from this uh, indigenous tribe of Turtle Island, uh, the black conscious person wants to say, no, we're from Africa. Now, there, there's, a, there's a problem there. Somebody has romanticized Africa. So where if you're a dark-skinned person or a brown skin, uh, not looking like Kamala Harris, because Kamala Harris, if you all know she's a politician, a Democrat, she looked like a white woman to me. So I don't even, because she wanted them Negro peons and another brother up there, damn, they look like a white boy. Uh, these people are not black. These people, no. I, I don't re I don't accept them as being a Moor. They've mixed in so much they lost their Moorish card. You know, there ain't nothing Moorish about them. When I look like Steph Curry, when I look at Steph Curry, he looked like a little white boy to me. Hitting, you know, you know, hitting he, tight basketball player, but he looks like a white man to me. And but that's my opinion. I know his dad is uh, Dale Curry. I used to watch Dale Curry play, you know, all the time back in the day. Now Dale looked like. He a brother, very light-skinned brother, but then when he mixed his genes and with another white woman, his son came out looking like a white man. So to me, Steph Curry, no disrespect, but Steph Curry looks like a white man, you know, and I know he looked like Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson, 100% white, you know what I'm saying? So they look like they could be brothers to me. So, you know, it, it is what it is uh, that, you know, sometimes the children pay for the mistakes of their forefathers. So um, hopefully y'all can see my screen. Now, I did get my DNA test done through, um, um, I'm sorry, 23andMe. 23andMe tells me that I got a lot of uh, Nigerian blood, right, or Cameroonian blood, or people who occupied not even occupied the land now. See, it's the migration stories that really got people um, off track. You know what I'm saying? It's the migration stories because when the planet was all together, the lands were all together. It's called Ganawa, right? Ganawa. Everything was together. So are you telling me when the continents were all one that everybody just lived in the space that they call Nubia or Africa now? You have to be kidding. They're, they're telling us now through DNA research and fossils and all that, that the Neanderthals were actually dark-skinned people, right? Pr more primitive than the modern human now, but they were also dark-skinned people. So all the the movies that you ever seen about Neanderthals being white-skinned people, no. No, that's not what the DNA says. That's not even what they say. So... Uh, we got to get out of our minds just because you're dark skin with woolly hair or even straight hair. Dark skin with straight hair because you got brothers over here that look like uh, Moors. I'm not talking about people in India. I'm not talking about Indian people because Indian people look different even though they're darker. They're darker than people in Nubia with straight hair. I'm talking about Moorish, Nubian looking people with our facial features, everything. Some in the indigenous Americas have straight hair. My great grandmother, who was Cherokee, had straight hair, dark, Nubian features, everything. My grandmama, uh, Lillian, who uh, they migrated from Oklahoma, you know, because uh, my mama and my daddy side Cherokee. So they migrated from Oklahoma to Texas and then settled in Arizona, a place called Randolph, Arizona, which is probably worse than any hood in the inner city is way out in the desert way out in the desert nothing the nearest store is like 10 miles away 
And my mama and them almost starved to death growing up. You know what I'm saying? Because they had to ask the neighbors for milk, uh, uh, food, you know, because my grandmama, you know, she used to go out there and act like a fool, be out for like five, six days, not take care of the household. So my mom had to feed everybody like at seven or eight years old. So I don't want nobody telling me I'm from goddamn Africa. I ain't from no Africa. No disrespect. But my family heritage don't, we don't speak about no Africa. I'm sorry, man. I don't care what it make y'all brothers feel like. My family ain't from Africa. And you, if you want to debate on that, we could debate all day. Because now I'm starting to look at death records, birth records, and ain't no Africa on there. Right? And we all know now that Africans came over here, but indigenous people also were enslaved and sent to England and Africa. So... Peace to the brother Dan Calloway for breaking that down, man. You know what I'm saying? So now we can put the whole puzzle together, right? Now, do now do indigenous people from America look like Africans? Absolutely, because we share the same seed. The same seed walked across the planet, right? We didn't all come from uh, uh, Egypt like uh, the Sabans are trying to push. Oh, we all came from, no, 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 no. We didn't all come from Egypt. We did not all come from Egypt. We did not all come from Africa. So get that out of your brain because you can't prove it. But I can prove that I'm from here, though. And I can prove millions of people call themselves black. And they ask their granddaddy or great-granddaddy, oh, where are you from? Oh, we Blackfoot. Oh, we this. Oh, we another tribe. Oh, we Pequoy. Or uh, we Iroquois. Or we, we Cherokee. We Yamasee. We Gwale. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh all this, uh, this, this making up, and 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 if you say you're, and if you say all black people come from Africa, you're pushing a white man's theory, right? Because black people didn't come up with the theory of out of Africa. Uh, actually, even they had been working on this theory in the in the 1900s, right? That not all black people are from Africa. But they knew the slaves that came from Africa, they want to say, hey, you know, we want to create a, a, a nation because Abraham Lincoln didn't think uh, uh, Africans and, um, and Americans could live together, right? So he created, they created Liberia. You know, they, that, that's where they created Liberia, right? So of the, uh, the uh, freed slaves from America, the Moorish African ones, went back to Liberia, right, that was set up for them by the white man, right, and they went back, and what did they do? What did they do? They went back and enslaved their own brothers and sisters. So don't give me all this uh, if, if, if we're all black, then we're all on the same side. No, because you see a division in the thinking right now. You got somebody trying to push these thoughts into indigenous Moorish people's heads, Nijis or whatever you want to call ourselves. I, I prefer more, you know what I'm saying? But I I wouldn't mind Niji either, you know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm from here. I know my family's from here, you know what I'm saying? And so when these people are pushing these narratives, it's really up to you as an individual or your family to say, hmm, okay, we'll take that into consideration, you know what I'm saying? Now, we got love for you because you look like us. So ge the genetics is there, but where you're actually from, where you're born, autochthonous, where your indigenency comes from, that is a totally different story. Because obviously if I go to Africa, you know what I'm saying, there's African tribes, nations that don't like Negroes from America. I, but they never told you that, huh? Uh, the Africans that, that are trying to push, you know, this whole Marcus Garvey thing, go back to Africa type thing. Uh, did Mark? I, and I'm hearing that Marcus Garvey never even went to Africa. I love Marcus Garvey. You know what I'm saying? But there's no record, as far as I know, that Marcus Garvey going to Africa. None. You know what I'm saying? Noble Jalil went to Africa. You know what I'm saying? He went. Peace to the prophet. You know what I'm saying? Peace to the prophet. But this out of Africa thing is going too far, man. 
we should be smarter than this. Like I'm hearing uh, some brothers, uh, you know, no disrespect to the Sabans, but, you know, they're pushing this African thing. And I'm like, to me, but when I hear you talk, you sound like an American. And they'll say, oh, no, because our, our culture was stripped. Then get, you, get go back to Africa then. I hate to sound like a white person, but go back to Africa then. If you think that's truly where you're from, all of them should go back to Africa. All of them. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here if you think you're from Africa? It doesn't make sense. It's a walking contradiction. It's a walking contradiction. Now, nobody could tell me I'm from Africa because I'm from here. I don't care what Dr. York says. I don't care what uh, Infudishi says. I love all the brothers I'm naming right now. Ivan Van Sertima, uh, uh What other uh, Moorish scholars do we have? You know, uh, wh whoever's out there, Marcus Garvey. Um, uh, well, Malcolm X knew he was from here. Martin Luther King knew he was from here. Um, who else? Uh, Frederick Douglass knew he was from here because he said, how did we become enslaved on the land where our forefathers grew up? You know what I'm saying? So uh, Harriet Tubman knew she was from here. She never said nothing about Africa. Nothing. And she looked more African than the Africans. Huh? My grandma Lillian looked darker than most Africans, and she was Cherokee. Right? So your skin complexion and, and my grandma had very straight hair. Very straight hair. Very straight hair. But she's darker than a lot of Africans that I've seen in Africa. So your dark skin and your hair really don't tell you where you're from. Your family and your tribe got to tell you where you're from. You know what I'm saying? The, you know. So anyway, I'm, I've been doing a lot of talking. Uh, a lot of people are not going to like what I just said. But it's the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. You know what I'm saying? As the president of the United No Obvious Nation of Moors, we recognize uh, that we're from here. You know what I'm saying? Now, the Yamasi did mix in um, with, with African slaves that came. They mixed in with African slaves because they damn near look like African slaves themselves, right? And the Yamasee were also forced into slavery, but the Yamasee were also involved in the slave trade. Just like the Aniyuwea, where I'm from, we were also involved in enslaving other Indians and Africans, right? So that's why when you see books come out, you know, the Black Cherokee Indian. The Black Cherokee Indian was here before the European got here, but they took, they participated in the slave trade because that was the way they survived. Now, they treated their slaves way better than the white man did, but there were still there was a lot of Indian tribes that were involved in the slave trade of other Indian tribes and Africans or Nubians. So that gets a little confusing, especially if you're a black Negro, Niger, nigger type of person, because a nigger just means that you're ignorant. You're ignorant about who you are. You have no idea who you are. Uh, so you let the white man tell the story for you. And that's a, uh, <laughs> that, that's a bad deal. That's a bad deal that you took with the devil. So you know what I'm saying? I'm here to correct all that garbage that they put in your head. And so-called uh, African historians, or, how come they don't study the indigenous America, especially if your forefathers are saying that you're from here and you disrespecting your forefathers and you're going over to Africa. Shame on you. Shame on your goddamn black ass. Shame on your ass for disrespecting your family and your oral tradition and your indigenous here to want to run back to Africa. Do you think it's going to get better if you run back to Africa? You see how people in Africa are living. You, you see how they live. And you tell me you want to run back to Africa, a place that you're not even from. You don't know one person over there. You don't know one family member over there, but you say you're from Africa. How much sense does that make? All right. Well, anyway.
let's go over to this DNA thing, man. I know we've been looking at this, looking at the screen. So this is the DNA, um, the raw data that was captured by 23andMe. You know, this says I'm a I'm an EU290 haplogroup, right? This haplogroup goes back to Ursa Ma'atre, Setep and Ray the Third, right? So that's genetics. That's that's straight up genetics. So somehow I'm related to uh, Ursa Ma'atre, Setep and Ray, which you call Ramesses the Third. Somehow I'm related to this brother. He he's like my great 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 great. Cool. I understand that. Like I said, we walked across the planet, right? And that. And let me just add this in that uh, gene pool, right, of the EU290 could have migrated from somewhere else and settled in Egypt. You know what I'm saying? So they don't they're not telling the whole uh, migration story because they're still pushing the white narrative that the only way we got to the Americas was by slave boat. Now, Ivan Van Sertima talked about that. So that's not the only way we got to the Americas by a boat. Matter of fact, we've always been here, even when the continent split. But that's a whole other story. So let me, so let's read this. So this is Tyrone Cannon, and his he he took my raw DNA data, and actually uh, compared it against uh, other S and P's. And S and P is a um, uh, I forgot it's a nucleo. Oh, let me let me look this up real quick, y'all. It's a nucleotide, a singular nucleotide polymorphism, um, and they're the most common type of genetic variation amongst people. Each S and P represents a difference in a single DNA building block called a nucleotide. All right, so let me get into this. So this is by Tyrone Cannon, who used my DNA raw data from 23andMe, an African American paternal lineage adds an extremely ancient root to the human Y chromosome phylogenic tree. We report the discovery of an African American Y chromosome that carries the ancestral state of all S and MPs that define the basal portion of the Y chromosome below phylogenic tree. The A00 lineage was discovered in a large database of consumer samples of African Americans and has not been identified in traditional hunter gatherer populations from sub Saharan Africa. Okay, so there's a genetic difference right there. The A00 was uh, from the samples that were taken from African Americans or uh, misnomered African Americans, but was not found in the hunter gatherer populations of sub Saharan Africans. A median joining network shows that African American A00 lineage is 11 mutational steps from the nearest MBO, and that the maximum difference between any pair of MBO is nine steps. Now, MBO is like a, um, it's like an African. Um, uh, I had to Google it real quick. So, the MBO people are a Bantu group of M of MBO plain. Littoral region, Mungo division, Nukang, Nukang Samba, and Melong divisions in and in the west region, Manoa division, Sanchu subdivision, and upper Nakam division, Kekam, Kekem division of Cameroon. The MBO and Banyagi people live in and around the Bayang Imbo Wildlife Sanctuary. So basically, it's Bantu people, and there's a subdivision in Cameroon called the Kakem. All right. So there's a genetic difference between an African American and an African, right? And this is science. So there ain't no there ain't no debate in that. That's straight science. We also estimated the level of variation among nine A double O lineages, including one additional MBO individual by using a battery of 95 YSTRs for which all individuals had no missing data. 
a median joining network shows that the African American A00 lineage is 11 mutational steps from the nearest MBO and that the maximum difference between any pair of MBO is 9 steps. Uh, mutation rate, if you guys know how to decipher this, go ahead. I don't. I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? There's a chart that was developed by the scientists running this uh, this survey or this uh, this sample test. So uh, have fun with that. So let's continue. The above illustration shows how genetically distant the American's A00 is in comparison to the MBO's A00 by way of nine, I mean, 11 step mutational difference. The genotyping of a DNA sample that was submitted to a commercial genetic facility demonstrated that the Y chromosome of this African American individual carried the ancestral state of all known Y chromosome SNMPs. They're talking about me. We identified 11 Y chromosomes that were invariant and identical to the A00 chromosome at five of the six Y STRs. Two of the 11 chromosomes carried DYS19-16, whereas the others carried DYS19-15. These 11 chromosomes were all found in a sample of 174, around 6.3%. MBO individuals from Western Cameroon. Seven of these MBO chromosomes were available for further testing, and the genotypes were found to be identical at 37 and 39 SNMPs known to be derived on the A00 chromosome. Although we identified the A00 lineage in an African American, the unusual Y STR profile associated with this individual's Y chromosome allowed us to identify the same diverge, excuse me, divergent lineage in a single ethnic group living in a small region of Western Cameroon. Interestingly, contrary to the previous Y chromosome and the M mitochondrial DNA studies, we did not identify the most basal lineage in the traditional hunter-gatherer population, such as the Ho Khoisan or pygmies, right? The Y chromosome of this American carries the ancestral state of all known Y chromosome SNPs. It didn't say the MBO's Y chromosome carried the ancestral state of all known Y chromosomes. It said the, indi the American individual carries the ancestral state of all known Y chromosome SNPs. This is evidence of what was thought to be the oldest populations in the world, Khoisan and Pygmies are in fact predated by the Americans A00 chromosome. To reiterate, the usual YSTR profile associated with this individual's Y chromosome allowed us to identify the same divergent lineage in a single ethnic group living in a small region of Cameroon. But it's divergent, right? That means it diverged from this uh, YSTR. If A00 is MBO derived Y DNA lineage, it should be that the MBO's Y chromosome allowed them to identify the same divergent lineage in an American. The American A00 allowed them to identify similarities in small regions of Western Cameroon. This is representative of being an American lineage. Now, he did a lot of comparative analysis. But he's saying that my A00 chromosome predates pygmy. So I think we might have learned a lot of history in reverse if that, you know, holds to be true based on, you know, uh, chromosomes, SNMP, STRs, YSTRs, and all that. All right, but we do have a linkage to Africa. I mean, but is Africa the beginning of everything? Is it? As Moors, are we limited? Or you like to call yourselves black people or Negroes, which just legally means you just have no rights. But are we limited to Africa? Do we only come from Africa? Because that's what the white man thinks. You know, do we only come from Africa? 
I don't think so. All right. When researchers found that Albert Perry's Y chromosome carries the ancestral state of all SNMPs that define the basal portion of the Y chromosome phylogenic tree, Mike Hammer of the University of Arizona was contacted. He subsequently contacted some colleagues in the UK who searched their huge database of African samples to see if any of them matched the American A00 samples. They found similarities all from Cameroon. It's reported that allegedly the STR haplotype of A00 is extremely unusual. Therefore, very easy to see that the MBO samples were matches to the Perry sample. However, there were never matches, just similarities. Evidenced by 11-step mutational difference and matches at 37 of the 39 S SNMPs known to derive from the A00 chromosome. Identifying chromosomes at five of the six Y FTRs, particularly when nine of the 11 chromosomes didn't match the Alale DYS19, is not a match at all. Also, only six Y STRs is not a sufficient haplogroup. Twelve is a better number of short tandem repeats for a more informational haplogroup. They had samples from 174 MBO individuals, but were only able to identify similarities in 11 chromosomes. Respectively, 11 out of 174, which is only 6.3% of the MBO samples, if A00 origins were in fact with the MBO people, A00 would more likely be in endemic to the MBO, but it's not. Then it goes on to state, seven of these MBO chromosomes were available for further testing, and the genotypes were found to be identical at 37 of 39 SNMPs known to be derived on the A00 chromosome. This actually means that seven out of the 174 MBO samples were identical at 37 of 39 SNMP. This does not denote that the, the American A00 and the MBO A00 are the same or that they are the same people and surely doesn't equate to the American A00 deriving from the MBO. In fact, the evidence equally suggests the opposite. The ancestry of Albert Perry and the ancestor of the MBO men split up a long time ago. However, Perry's ancestry an ancestor must have split up before the MBO men. Perry's Y chromosome is the most basal lineage of A00. The lack of dense sampling and so-called African Americans has contributed to the failure to identify more A00 positive samples in North America. New evidence puts man in North America 50,000 years ago. Radiocarbon tests of carbonized plant remains where artifacts were on Earth last May along the Savannah River in Allendale County by University of South Carolina archaeologist Dr. Albert Goodyear indicate that the sediments containing these artifacts are at least 50,000 years old, meaning that humans inhabited North America long before the last ice age. Topper is the oldest radiocarbon data site in North America, Goodyear says. However, other early sites in Brazil and Chile, as well as a site in Oklahoma, also suggest that humans were in the Western Hemisphere as early as 30,000 years ago, years ago to perhaps 60,000 years ago. Three car radiocarbon dates were obtained from deep in the terrace at Topper with two dates of 50,300 years ago and 51,700 years ago on burnt plant remains. One modern date related to an intrusion, Stafford says. The two 50,000 year dates indicate that there are at least 50,300 years old. The absolute age is not known. The dates could actually be older, Goodyear says. 50,000 should be a minimum age since there may be little detectable activity left. The Topper excavation site is in the central Savannah River Valley of Allendale County, South Carolina. A popular assumption in some scientific circles is atomically modern humans evolved in Africa between 60 and 80,000 years ago. Evidence of AMH migration out of Africa continent has been documented in Australia and Asia 
at least 50,000 years and in Europe at least 40,000 years. The fact that A and Mitch were also in North America at or near the same time highlights the fallacy of the Outer Africa concept. Hope y'all got that. Hope y'all got that. Because if they're saying in this topper excavation site in South Carolina, if atomically modern humans supposedly evolved in 60,000 to 80,000 years ago in Africa, right, and then they found a site in North America that's, or in, and well, basically in Asia and Australia 50,000 years ago, and in Europe 40,000 years ago, then this probably isn't right, right? This probably isn't because the dates are too close to within like 10,000 years. And then you have a site in America that they say it goes back at least 50,000 years ago. This is the outer Africa theory is looking flawed, right? Right. So in Lapa, in Lapa Vermelha, fourth hominid one, I think this is some kind of scientific journal, Morpholo morphological affinities of the earliest known American by Walter A. Neves, Joseph F. Powell, Andre Proust, Eric G. Ozolin, and Mark Bloom. The following is stated. In this work, the extracontinental morphological affinities of a Paleo-American skeleton was dated between 11,000 and 11,500 years before present is before present and investigated the first South American show a clear resemblance to modern South Pacific and African populations while the first North Americans seem to be at an unresolved morphological position between modern South Pacific and Europeans in none of these analyses the first Americans show any resemblance to either Northeast Asians or modern Native Americans. All right? I, I shouldn't have to reiterate that for y'all, y'all Negroes. All right? So, in the first case, Lapa Verhelma, fourth, hominid, first, ex, uh, exhibited an undisputed morphological affinity, firstly with Africans, and secondly with South Pacific populations. All right? The results obtained clearly conform the idea that the Americans were the first colonized by the generalized homo sapien populations which inhabited East Asia in the late Pleistocene in the late Pleistocene era, I guess, before the definition of classic mongoloid morphology. The analysis allows us to conclude that Lapa Verhelma for hominid one presents a strong similarity first with Africans and secondly, with South Pacific populations. No resemblance was found between Lapa Verhelma, Fourth Hominid One, and either Asians or late Holocene American Indians. The results obtained in this work confirm our previous findings that the first Americans have no special biological resemblance to modern Northern Asians. The oldest human skeletons of the Americas shows a strong similarity with modern Africans and Australians. All right. All right. So let's, let's get that straight. Get that straight. Uh, Lapa Verhelma Hominid Four, uh, uh, Verhelma Four Hominid One, Louisa, Louis, Luzi, Luzia, was morphologically reconstructed by Richard Neve, University of Manchester, one of the world's leading forensic artists. He had this to say about the reconstruction. He said, that to me is a negroid face. It had all the features, features you associate with a negroid face. Right? All right. Y'all take a look at that. I don't want y'all to miss that. All oh, you Pan-Africans and all that. Are you going to deny this man is a, is a Moor, is, is a black man, but he's not from Africa? All right. And this goes back 11,000 years ago. This is before the Olmecs, okay? So when the Olmecs got here, they seen people like this, right? And that's why they were so humbly welcomed, right, with all the advanced technology coming from the Dogon and Egypt 
That's why they were so welcomely welcomed because they look like them, right? It makes sense to me. All right. All right, Professor Constantine Samuel Ravinesque, The Primitive Black Nations of America in 1832, all right, uh, by Professor C.S. Raffinesque. Raf, okay, let me get this right. Raffinesque, Atlantic Journal and Friend of Knowledge, 1833 Indians. The society having offered a reward for the best memoir on the origin of the Asiatic Negroes. I sent them last year two memoirs, one on those Asiatic Negroes, wherein I demonstrated the affinities of their languages with the African and Polynesian Negroes, as well as with the Hindus and Chinese, and renders it possible that all Negroes originated in the southern slopes of the Himalaya Mountain, as they did once exist all over India. South China, Japan, Persia, and Arabia. Now, this is a man writing this in 1833, y'all. Okay? Okay, so let, let's not get it twisted. Let's keep reading. The second memoir was on the Negro or black nations found in America before Columbus, wherein I proved their existence and connection by language with the Negroes of Africa and Polynesia. These memoirs have been rewarded by the Learned Society of Geography with a gold medal of a hundred francs, which was lately communicated to me by Messrs. Warden, our former consul in Paris, and Jomar, member of the Institute. This gratifying intelligence will be acceptable to all my friends and furnish another proof of my ability to unravel at least the origins of all American nations and tribes. In pursuing the path which I have opened by comparing all languages mathematically and numerically with each other, to many, this fact of old black nations in America will be new. Right? Right? Because, I, like I said, even back then, they were ignorant about where we were from. Now, the, I don't think back necessarily they were pushing back then the out of Africa theory, but they were pushing a theory that would, you know, take land away from blacks, away from Moors. So, so it was, I guess it was brewing in the air back then, but most knew that we were from here. Yet it is an important feature of American history, as well as the existence of primitive white nations. They're still more numerous. So he said that we were basically more advanced than the white nations, right? To furnish a kind of insight into this subject, I will here merely enumerate the black tribes of which I found evident traces and remains in North and South America. The Native American Negroes or black Indians have been seen in Brazil, uh, Gu Gu Guyana, Caracas, Popayan, Choco, North California. Did that say North California, y'all? <laughs> and etc. The Auroras, uh, Caroras of Cumana were black, but with fine features and long hair, like the Jolos and Galas of Africa. The Esteros, latitude 32, are like the Hottentots and the Numuquas, the Tambukis, and other Negritian tribes, not black but dark brown, yet complete Negroes with large, thick lips broad, flat noses, and very ugly, and with hair crisp or curly. All these tribes live in New California. The Auroras, or Caroras, or Cumana, were black, but with fine features and long hair, like the Jolos and Galas of Africa. Right? So he's comparing us to looking like people from Africa. Right? It doesn't mean that we're from Africa, but the foreigner is trying to do their scientific research, and they have limited data, but they're saying, that the indigenous people look like people from Africa, right? Now, this is not what I'm saying. This is what history is saying, all right? Uh, the American Negroes of the Cuarenqua and Choco, the great level plain, 900 miles long, 90 wide, separating the Andes of South America from the mountains of Panama, were black and with woolly heads in 1506. They are mentioned in the Dangleria, and all the early accurate writers. 
the ya the Yamasis, which we know as the Yamasis, uh Jamasi, were remarkably black people, notices of Florida and their campaigns. The ancient Caracoles of Haiti represented as a nation of beasts by the historical songs. So Hades, Haitians, the ancient wait a minute. The he's well the ancient Caracoles of Haiti. All right. They're saying that they're black. You know what I'm saying? But the ancient would mean before the white man, right? The Kalifurnams of the Carib Islands, called Black Caribs, or Gu'aoni, Gu'aini, if I'm saying that right, but others are Black branch of Caribs. The Arquahos of Kutara, mentioned by Gar Garcias in the West Indies, quite black. The Auroras of Raleigh or Yaruras of the Spaniards, ugly black or brown Negroes, yet existing near the Oronco, uh, Oro, the Oronco, and language known, called monkeys by the neighbors, the Chamas of, the, of Guyana, brown Negroes like Hottentots, the Manjipas or Portuguese of Nien, Nienhof, I don't think we would have named ourselves Nienhof, the Motayas of the Nivet are all of Brazil, brown Negroes or curly hair. The Negritas of Mat of Matier in Darien. Darien was in uh, southern Mexico, yet existing in Choco under the name of Chuanas or Guanas or Chinos. Ugly black or red Negroes, which probably what the Aztecs look like, right? Those are what the Aztecs and the original Aztecs and Mayans look like, okay? The Manabis of the uh, Popayan in Colombia, blackish with Negro features and hair. The Guabas of ja Jaras of the, ta of the Tagugalpa near the Honduras, the Enslin or Esteros of New California, ugly blackish Negroes. The black Indians met by the Spaniards in Louisiana in 1543, y'all. Peace to all the Washita, Shata in Louisiana, you know what I'm saying? The moon-eyed Negroes and albinos destroyed by the Cherokees and seen in Panama, right? So we know the Cherokees were found in North Carolina, right? The moon-eyed Negroes and albinos, which they, you know, which they're cursed with leprosy probably. Those are the white-looking Negroes, right? So that's what it is. Now, I just named a whole bunch of stuff. That's just from one study. That's just from one study, all right? And now let's get this because this is where a lot of uh, Ivan Van Sertima got his information from, was from this white dude in 1879, right? So let me read the title. In the Human Species by A.D.E. Quatrafages, Professor of Anthropology in the Museum of Natural History, Paris, 1879, in part he states the following. The equatorial current of the Atlantic opens a similar route leading from Africa to America. There are some evidence, rare it is true, showing that wrecks have been carried in this direction. It is possible, therefore, that the same may have also happened to man. We shall not, therefore, be surprised at finding in the New World repre uh, representative races which seem to be originally to the Old World. We shall easily understand the multiplicity of American races which is perhaps still contested by some Morton followers, but firmly established in the opinion of every unprejudiced person by the testimony of Humboldt and D. Or Bigni, classical work on the El Hemone American, Americain. So he's saying that amongst the unprejudiced people, the white people who were not racist, because believe it or not, all white people are not racist, He's saying that it holds true for every basically legitimate scientist or historian that you're going to find the old world in what the European is calling the new world. You know what I'm saying? But there ain't no new world because we had discovered it all centuries ago, right? Black populations have been found in America in very small numbers only and as isolated tribes in the midst of different nations, such as the Charuas of Brazil, the Black Caribbean of St. 
Vince in the Gulf of Mexico, the Jamasi of Florida, the dark complexion uh, Californians, or perhaps the dark men mentioned in the, in the Quiche traditions, and some by old Spanish adventure. He's saying in small numbers only, uh, maybe by this time, because by this time they're already starting to call us Negroes and stuff, right? Right. So you got to recognize that too in their statistics. Because think about it, if they called all black people indigenous Americans, uh, there would be a hell of a lot more indigenous Americans than whites and all the other right. So they keep you divided even within their own statistical system. It is evident that the more or less black elements have been brought from the Asiatic archipelagos and from Africa through some accident at sea. Now, it wasn't an accident. They have, they have there mixed with the local races <coughs> and have formed some small isolated group which are distinguished by their color from surrounding tribes. I'm going to read one more. All right, this is uh, in the De Soto Chronicles, the expeditions of Hernando de Soto in North America in 1539 to 1543, Volume 1, concerning a battle that the Spaniards fought with the Indians of the coast. In part, the following is stated. On the last day, afternoon, they saw seven canoes emerge from among some rushes and come towards them. In the first one came an Indian as large as a Philistine. You remember uh, Goliath was from Philistine, right, in the Bible, and he was nine feet tall, nine inches, right? And a black as an Ethiopian, right? Because he's saying he's black as an Ethiopian, tall as a Philistine. Very different in color and appearance from those that they had left in the interior. Standing in the bow of his canoe, the Indian said to the Castilians in a gruff and haughty voice, Thieves, vagabonds, idlers, without honor or shame, who go along this shore disturbing, disturbing its natives, you are to leave this place immediately by one of those two mouths of this river. If you do not want me to kill all of you and burn your boats, see that I do not find you here tonight, or a man, or not a man of you will escape with his life. Here, Juan Coles as the following words that an Indian spoke, besides those already given. If we had large canoes like yours, he meant the ships, we would follow you to your country and take it, for we, for we also are men like you. All right? So, um, there's a lot to go through here, man. Um, matter of fact, I may just continue this and just rub it in these African, uh, these out of African white man theory pushing Negroes that, uh, yeah, we're not from Africa. Not every uh, Negro or black person, more. More is already know. I think more is already, we have to talk to the, to the people from Negroid land, right, which is a disrespect to the ancestors. Ancestors, even from Africa, never called themselves Negroes, right? Never called themselves Negroes. Never. Never. So that's even a disrespect toward uh, people in Nubia or Australia or uh, the European indigenous population, uh, the Dravidians, you know, all that. They never called themselves Negroes. Never. So um, I'm sticking with more personally. Uh, the nation will stick with more. That's why the, we're the United Nawabi Nation of Moors and we're not the United Nawabi Nation of Negroes, we could never hope to get any land back uh, or buy land and hold it as indigenous land uh, if we call ourselves Negroes. That's, so anybody pushing that is, is an agent of the devil um, or colored person or this is the agent of the devil. So anyway, uh, I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. And, uh, you know, this is Ulhutha Nudima Kahagadua El. Um, Hotep, all the brothers across the across the world who are indigenous to the world, not just Africa. Uh, peace to those who are truly woke and not trying to push an agenda, but only trying to push the truth based on research and the oral traditions of their forefathers. Anybody that goes against their forefathers is bound to reap the benefits of that.
Um, and I ain't talking about something very positive. So believe in your forefathers and what they say, right? I'm sorry. Don't believe in what they say. You can agree what they say and do their research. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm doing my research. Next thing I'm going to do is pull up some uh, birth records and death records and uh, death certificates of my, of my people, right? Like my, starting off with my grandfather and my grandma on both sides. So uh, we have oral tradition from my mom's side. I don't have it from my father's side. Now my father's side is the one that connects with uh, Ursa Ma'atre Setepenre, the third. So, you know, I got work to do on that side. Y'all got some work to do. Stop just believing people. Uh, I don't even care if it's Dr. York. Dr. York did his genealogy, right? You need to do yours. Uh, stop following people. <laughs> stop worshiping people and following people and follow your own heart and see where that takes you, all right? Um, you know, peace. Peace on this wonderful Nuwabian day. And uh, I'll catch y'all later.